Well, summer is upon us here in the United States, and if you've wanted to take better Milky Way photos, this video is a great place for you to start. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in the beautiful southern Utah area. And in today's video, I'm so excited to share with you a few tips and tricks that I love to use in order to create better Milky Way photos. These are things that anyone can do, and some of the tips involve things like picking up a new piece of gear or a new piece of software, and other tips are things that you can simply do to photos that you've already taken. And I've got seven great tips and things that you can do in this video that are gonna help you, and I really think they're gonna help you to take some better Milky Way photos this upcoming summer. Now, before we get started with today's video, I did just wanna mention that I do have some openings still on my summer workshops, which are centered around Milky Way photography. If you do really wanna become better at Milky Way photography, these workshops are the absolute best place to go in order to improve rapidly, really, really, really rapidly uh, in just a short amount of time. They're simply like three to four days long usually, and they all include in the field and post-processing techniques where I'm gonna show you exactly how I do everything involving the Milky Way, how I take photos, how I scout for photos, how I edit photos, and all that good stuff. In addition, I'm gonna be loaning each one of my participants a star tracker, which I'm gonna mention later in this video. It's the best way to take night photos, and I wanna show you guys how to use one, and I've got one that you can borrow. If you wanna register for a workshop, there's some links down below where you can find them, and then you can register for an upcoming summer workshop this year. Like I said, there's still a few openings available, but make sure to jump on them quick. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in to the first tip. Tip number one is that you need to be using a star tracker if you want Want to take better night photos. Now, if you are not an experienced night shooter, you're probably out there shooting on uh, just a tripod with your camera and you're taking like eight to 12 exposures and you're stacking them to reduce noise because noise is like the biggest killer of night photos. It's really hard to capture clean images out there. So in the last few years, star trackers have gained a lot of popularity. Essentially what a star tracker is, is it's a device that goes on top of your tripod camera attaches to it via a ball head and it you align it with a north star and then it turns your camera at the same speed as the earth meaning that you can capture perfectly sharp photos of the stars uh, at however long exposure you want the longer the exposure the better aligned it needs to be but i capture exposures of 8 to 12 minutes usually at like iso 200 to 400 which is just giving me not only really really clean images but they're also a little bit more detailed because your camera is focusing in on that one little spot in the sky uh, for much much longer and allows you to pick up more colors more detail everything is sharper and there's a lot less noise a star tracker is by far the best way to take night photos you really should pick one up you can get one anywhere from probably $200 to up to a thousand. I posted links for the trackers that I really recommend down below. I've got one from Slick that if you use my discount code Jackson15, you can get 15% off. And I've got another one from iOptron, uh, which is going to be for a little more deep space stuff for when you really need to align your uh, scope really, really well. So those are down below if you want to pick up a star tracker. Like I said, I really think there's not a better way that you can improve your night photography than to start using a star tracker. Tip number two goes hand in hand with a star tracker, but you certainly don't need a star tracker in order to do this, but that is to start taking blue hour blends and avoid light painting. Light painting is a little technique that a lot of photographers use where you might use your phone's flashlight or one of those little loom cubes or something to create light on your landscape in order to light up the landscape and make it so it's not quite as dark. Unfortunately, um, I personally don't like the look of that. I don't like the unnatural look that the light provides. There's some photographers who do a really nice job of this. Um, when they are lighting their scene, they, they know exactly where to put the lights and exactly how to light it, but it takes so long to get to this level. I still don't like the look, even though those photos I do think look all right, um, but I'm not a fan of it. So rather than um, using a light to brighten your foreground, uh, do a blue hour blend and a blue hour blend is gonna allow you to still retain that detail in the foreground without having to light it up. So to take a blue hour blend, you're gonna take that photo maybe just after sunset or just before sunrise, and you're gonna blend that in with your Milky Way shot from later. Now you're gonna do this in the same spot to maintain the integrity of the Milky Way. Obviously you don't wanna have the Milky Way over something that faces north or something like that, um, but you can use this in order to show more detail in the foreground. It's gonna make it look a lot better. Almost all my shots of the Milky Way are blue hour blends, and I just think that it's the best way to do it because you're gonna get, uh, not only are you gonna get more light in the foreground, but it's going to be a lot lower noise because you're shooting that at ISO 100 or 400, or you're shooting at a low ISO as opposed to your normal night photo at ISO 6400. It's gonna be super, super dark. It's gonna be super, super noisy. 
Now my third piece of advice here is to invest in a better camera or lenses. A lot of you guys might already be shooting on a really nice camera with some really nice lenses, but if you're not, definitely consider upgrading. If you're not using a full frame, you definitely should be for night photos and getting a little bit better lens can help you a lot as well. Uh, the benefit of having a little bit nicer lens and the lens that you'd be looking for would be something with a very low maximum aperture. So you'd be looking for like an F 1.4, 1.8, even an F 2.8 would be an upgrade over an F 4. The reason why you want that increased aperture is because it allows a lot more light to come into the camera, meaning you need less ISO, uh, which means less noise essentially. And so it's going to allow more light, less noise. It's going to make your photos look a little bit better. Pair that with a nicer camera, a full frame sensor on a camera that handles low light really well. And you're going to have a lot lower noise images. As I mentioned before, noise is the number one killer of your night photos. Now, the next thing that you can do to really help your night photos is to get a software that reduces the noise for you. Tons of them on the market out there. Um, ones that use AI technology are getting really popular right now. My personal favorite is Topaz Denoise AI or Topaz Photo AI. I'll put a link to those down below. And if you've watched my channel for long, you've probably seen tons of videos because I think that the software is just phenomenal. I've reviewed it a lot of different times talking about some different stuff. I'll link the videos to the other, the full reviews. I'm not going to talk about a full review and show you how to use it in this particular video. But if you are interested in that software, do check it out. If you already own the software, definitely be using it on your night photos because that's going to help you to get rid of so much noise, make your night photos look a whole heck of a lot better. Now, tip number five is to do a star reduction in Photoshop. This might sound a little counterintuitive for a lot of you guys because we're taking photos of the stars. Why would we want to reduce the stars? This is a technique that I use. A lot of other night photographers use out there that is basically called the star reduction, where you're reducing the brightness of all of the stars in order to help the Milky Way pop a little bit more. I've got some videos up on my channel that you can watch if you want to learn that technique, but essentially what it does is it really adds more clarity to the Milky Way. It makes the Milky Way pop out more when you get rid of those stars, and it really does make a big difference. Make sure to check out that video down below. I'll link it so that you guys can follow along. It's a really easy technique. It takes like one or two minutes to apply. You can turn the opacity down if you want the effect to be stronger or weaker, so you can truly dial it in to your personal taste and exactly what you want to do. Now, tip number six and seven are also editing techniques. Number six is that you should be applying a curves layer specifically to the sky. This is always like the first adjustment I do, and it really will help you to bring out some contrast, some color in the sky. All you're going to do is make a selection of the sky in Photoshop, and then you're going to simply add a curves layer, create an S curve, and it's going to create so much contrast and going to add so much color into your scene. Honestly, if all that you did was do this curves adjustment and you did the star reduction, your photo is going to look fantastic. There's obviously a lot more things you can do, but these two things are going to help you so, so much. That curves layer is so easy to use. Simply just make a little S curve and it is going to really make your Milky Way pop. You're really going to like the way that it looks, I think. Like I said, this is like the first step that I take in all of my Milky Way photo edits. Now, tip number seven is regarding the white balance and you definitely need to fix it. Now, some cameras do a little bit better with the auto white balance at night than others. And a lot of cameras, you will have to dial in that white balance every single time. My camera does pretty well with the white balance, but I still usually change it every time. Now with night photos, you can really tone things two ways. And these are the only kind of photos that I would recommend creating a tone other than neutral. So first and foremost, a lot of my night photos I do are really neutral tone. The Milky Way is like orangish red um, and the sky doesn't really have much color to it. This, it would be called like a neutral tone. You can do this, it'll look really, really great. The other way you can do things is kind of make it a more cool tone. And the cool tone is going to look a little realistic because um, you've got nice blue sky. You have some nice cool tones in the sky. Um, and those are really the only two ways you can do it. The opposite would be to make it warm toned. You would not want to make your Milky Way photos warm toned because then the sky would be like yellowish, reddish, orange, which is definitely not realistic and it's not gonna look good. I really don't like the look of warm Milky Way photos. So I really recommend keeping your Milky Way photos either neutral or to keep them cool toned. It's totally up to you. Do this using the white balance before you edit the colors in your image. Can't stress this enough. If you're doing a blue hour blend, do it to your raw Milky Way photo before you actually go in and start doing edits. 
do it right on your raw photo, right in Lightroom before you send it off to Photoshop or whatever. You're gonna cool it down or you're gonna make it neutral uh, because you don't wanna be messing with the colors after the fact. I used to try and fix the colors afterwards, after my edit, and it just doesn't work very well. It becomes really, really difficult to make it look realistic and to make it look nice. So for that reason, always, always adjust the white balance as the first step. Of course, you can slightly tweak it later, but you don't wanna be making any major adjustments on the back half of your edit. All right, guys, well, I really, really hope this was helpful for you. Uh, there's so much to learn about Milky Way photography, but I think if you follow these seven tips, you guys will be taking much better Milky Way photos by the end of the summer. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or any tips of your own, please leave them down below. Always love hearing from you guys and love hearing what you guys think. And if you take any great Milky Way photos, send them my way. I'd love to see them, love to see what you guys are working on and again if you guys are looking for to take the fast track get the fast pass to learning how to take great Milky Way photos I do have openings on my workshop links are down below really would love to meet you guys would love to have you out on my workshops we're gonna have a blast and we're gonna take a lot of great night photos thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video we will see you guys next time have a good one bye bye